we moved to Australia, um, we lived in the city, and then my wife and I decided that we wanted to live on a farm because Canberra is the nation's capital, but it's quite a small town. It's about 350,000. But it really is just bushland. It goes right into farms straight outside of town. And so you had the opportunity to buy a farm. Now, when we were looking to buy a place, doing a vineyard was not on my mind. And we found this place that we really liked. And I was driving up, and there was this perfect north-south hill, so it was directly facing north, which in Australia means towards the south, right? So it's like being south. And uh, it was one of the only places on the property clear of trees. And I looked and I said, wow, that is the perfect place to put a vineyard. It just looked like a vineyard belonged there. Mm -hmm. And my wife looked at me and said, you're not serious, are you? I said, we <laughs> only live once. And I said, here's something I can do in Canberra. I can't do any place else in the world. And yeah, I want to do it. And she said, I've got to want to put an extension on the house, which had some issues. But she postponed it, and we did it. So I don't know. It was just one of those things where I said, you only live once. This is something I can do. I wanted to do it. And the other argument was for it to be something to balance the science in my life, which tends to take over your life. And this was really meant to balance it and make me not completely, you know, get carried away of doing too much science during the day. Getting out, physical activity, and doing something creative, which is winemaking. Well, you put the science uh, in a... In a that wine growing, so. Well, a little bit. I mean, it's really a bit, there are aspects of science in the wine making, but it's more, I think it's like cooking. It's almost mm -hmm. like making, I like it's like making sourdough bread, no, or it isn't bread. So you inform it with a bit of science, but most of it is uh, is an artisan process. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's, it's quite different than the science I do, but it is a very good time to relax and to have something else mm -hmm in my life than just science. Uh, and it allows me to be more creative, I think, in the science side. Because it allows me to shift my mind away, which you often get good ideas. I mean, I always say that I have my best ideas. I used to only be the shower. I would always have a good idea in the shower. Now it's the shower and the vineyard. So when I'm out working the vines, I'll say, oh, hey, suddenly an idea will come to my head. That's what's useful. Uh, is yes. It? Yeah. So, um, as a Twitter person, which I started <laughs> a couple years ago, uh, I was just sitting down and I was I asked myself, what do I want to tweet about? And I said, well, the only thing I can I do wine and I do because I have a vineyard and I'm a winemaker uh, as my second job, and <laughs> I'm an astronomer, and I just I don't know. I said cosmic pinot. That sounds silly, and I just did it. That's all the thought. I mean, it was 15 seconds of thought. And uh, my, my, my kids or my barometer are like, oh, Dad, that is such a stupid thing. <laughs> but a uh, newspaper caught on to it almost immediately, and I thought that was great. So anyway, it's, uh, it's work. And I do, you know, I do tweet a lot about wine, and that's really almost a commercial thing, mm -hmm. because it's a very good way to announce a new release, for example. Yeah. Uh, but it also makes you kind of interesting to people. And then I do a lot of astronomy stuff uh, as well. And, and even public um, science and education issues type stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, for me, you want to have something that describes you for a Twitter handle that's memorable and is appropriate. So, you know, it, it, that's, it's, it is an unusual Twitter handle. It describes me, and it's memorable, so it works pretty well. <laughs> okay, thank you. But I was probably...